All that is gold does not glitter. Not all those who wander are lost. Hello everyone, I'm Tim. Funakoshi had more to say about the mind of a karateka. Not only should your mind be well developed, it should be free as well. We have to start by pointing out that a strong resolve and a focused mind are of paramount importance when studying karate. However, when we reach a certain level of mastery over our martial arts skills, it becomes just as important to be able to open and free our mind. The best practical example I can give you for this is the difference between the so-called fixed bunkai we see in competition for styles like Shotokan and the more interpretation-friendly bunkai we see in many practical karate-type seminars. Although there is a set of habitual acts of physical violence like Hanshi Patrick McCarthy teaches, when you take a closer look at this list, not only will you quickly realize the list itself is pretty expansive, when put in a practical context it will require a free and open mind to actually be able to apply the techniques you've learned. I specifically use Hanshi McCarthy as an example because in my humble opinion it is the most complete set of possible attacks you can find and it offers nearly infinite combinations and situations where self-defense is in order. Back to the open mind and how this concept also applies to your daily life. Let's look at learning to drive a car. See at first it is very complicated. You need to check your mirror, keep an eye on your velocity, push down the gas pedal, not too much, check your velocity, check your mirror, is the light on, oh damn my seat belt's not on, check your mirror, brake, shift into the right gear, check your mirror. But when you have sufficient practice on your belt, you'll notice you start a car and drive. Any fellow driver will agree that being too focused on all the things listed above would make you a very poor driver. There are two sides to this coin. After all, a lifelong karate student evolves throughout his studies. So this precept is not really meant for the beginning student. Confucian philosopher Meng Tzu said we should search for the lost mind, finding it strange that we will go through great pains to find a lost dog or cat to bring them back home, but that when the mind wanders down the wrong path and becomes lost, we make no attempt to bring it back. Conversely, Xiao Yong, a 11th century Chinese philosopher said, it's essential to lose the mind in order to free it. And Marshall Mathers, a 21st century American rapper said, you better lose yourself in the music the moment you own it, you better never let it go. I'm not even kidding. And I'm not going to quote any Disney princesses, but it's true. To really be able to live your life better, it's essential to let it go, let it go, so you're better able to hold on to it. This is essentially what this priest tells us to do. It challenges us to let our minds wander. It teaches us that this is necessary to be able to find our way. You see, Tolkien wrote this. All that is gold does not glitter. Not all those who wander are lost. This is true. When we allow ourselves to open our minds to the world, we can be able to think more freely and adapt more easily to the unexpected. To rein in the mind tightly takes away its freedom. To keep our mind in close confines may be a necessary beginner's habit, but doing so for our entire life prevents us from rising to a new level and will result in a life of unfulfilled potential. So in short, as a beginner, we best follow Meng Tzu's prescription, but later, we should allow the mind freedom by following the path set out by Xiao Yong. It's after all a law of nature that survival is reserved for those who can adapt to that which is unknown. Survival of the fittest, as Darwin said in his theory of evolution. The day's Chuck Norris joke is about that. Anyway, in this sense, Funakoshi's sixth precept may be one of the most important ones. If you like what you see here and you want to see more, click right here to see more. For now, let me wish you a wonderful day and as always, thanks for watching. There is no theory of evolution, just a list of creatures Chuck Norris has allowed to live.